Sisters, uh, good morning, Sister Nomsa. I saw that uh, you were the first one to, to enter. Uh, it's good to see that um, we are here and um, uh, uh, the Lord is, um, is blessing each one of you. I might be an good morning. Uh, White focus, we hope you are okay, Sam. Um, Mr. Enoch, uh, good to see you. And I can see that um, uh, you are here today, my friend Bruno. How are you? Um, apologies for the noise in the background of the trucks. Uh, this is because of. Um, uh, where we are and so you bear with us you know this is a roving uh, um, uh, program and schedule and um, wherever we are wherever it takes us um, uh, we go there and um, we preach from there sister Kristen um, hope that uh, that helps um, a good number of us shall we just pray together as we as we begin our god and our father in heaven it's a blessed day it's a blessed morning that you've given to each one of us your name be praised in the highest time has come again for us to share your word and we pray that as we do this may we find favor in your name may we find grace uh, may we hear you whisper to each one of us in the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so very much. And um, uh, it's good that we can engage again with one another uh, so that the word of the Lord should revive and revive us uh, this day. Um, Brother Douglas, uh, uh, good morning and I uh, hope that... Um, the family is okay. Um, so the word of the Lord has a way of reviving us each day um, as we wake up and as we engage in His um, in His Word, and we pray um, that um, today's reading will help us uh, refocus our um, uh, our plans for the day. Uh, yesterday. Uh, Mr. Mwenda, I was, I've been looking for you. I don't know why I've not been singing, but it's good that you are here um, uh, today. I've been asking Clara to, um, uh, for you to get in touch with me, but uh, you are here today. We've missed you, sir. Uh, it's good that we are here, Sister Monica. Uh, yesterday we talked about um, Noah, that Ma Noah was found righteous before God and also righteous uh, in his own generation. So we challenged ourselves and uh, each one of us to ensure that uh, we are found righteous before God. And at the same time, we are found righteous uh, in our own generation. It can't be that, uh, uh, Dr. Nandu, that we are found righteous only in the presence of God. It is it's, it's a two-way traffic. It is a two-way traffic. Uh, Noah was said to be righteous uh, before God, and then he was also righteous in his own generation. Uh, God was able to ascertain that the righteousness of Noah was correct and was right, and uh, it was also confirmed by the testimony of those that he lived with, that Noah lived a righteous life. 
And so we need a balanced life. We can't have a situation where um, people, you know, uh, Mr. Msawala, claim to know God and to love God and that God knows what is in their heart and that um, whatever they do on the other side, we must not care. No, friends. It must balance. It must add up the things that we do here in our generation and the way heaven looks at us it must be a balanced equation sister yvonne it must be a balanced equation tracy so that um we can safely say that okay god has 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 qualified you to be righteous that is okay but how about those that you live with those that you live with uh, it is possible that you can be a preacher you can be a pastor preaching a very powerful sermon every day and you may be found righteous before God. But you see, your righteousness may not be in tandem with those that you live with. But the Bible tells us that Noah was righteous before God and in his own generation. Yes, the generation was corrupt, was immoral, full of violence. But in that environment, Noah did what he could by the grace of God to live a righteous life. So colleagues and friends, um, it is important that uh, while on one side we are good at church, we also need to be good in the community where we live. We need to be good at church. We also need to be good to our own children. We need to be good at church, but at the same time, we must be good to our own spices, to our, to our own spouses. You see, I'm almost saying spices now. It was a slip of a tongue. Please, Jen, don't kill me that. Please, Pastor, you're calling us spices. I mean spouses. Okay, so we need to be, to be good. We, we, we can't just be called, you know, this one is very committed. This one is very dedicated just in church. And yet we are not called by the same words in our own home. So we need to have a balanced life. Good at home, good at church. So that when people say, this one is a child of God, your wife can say, this is very good. This is very good. Remember the story I shared with you uh, some time back? I don't know. I, don't, I can't even recollect it very well. The story I've been sharing when preaching, I share with people the story where I talked of, uh, of, um, of my tribesmen. Uh, I got this story from Mr. Mungalaba. Um, uh, this is a story where, you know, a, a man is preaching and is preaching in church and is preaching in church. Uh, those of you that know the story, you know what I'm talking about. I was preaching in church and preaching in church. And then, um, and then because him and his wife, his life was not very good at home, but he was very good at church. And so, um, so when he was preaching and you know, he had issues with his wife, but at church, very powerful preacher. And so in the midst of preaching, in the midst of preaching, um, so the wife had a small baby. And so the wife stood up in the midst of his preaching, talking about the love of God and how we need to love each other. The wife stood up in the midst of the congregation and spoke in Lenje and says, Meaning, uh, me, I have gone. Those of you that want to be deceived by this deceiver, you remain here. Me, I am gone. Now, when a, when a wife speaks like that, who wants to remain there? A, 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 and so let's be good at church and also be good at home. When we say God is good and people say all the time, so it must be all the time at home and all the time at church. So that balanced equation, found righteous before God and found righteous before men. And that's the story we had uh, yesterday. And remember, we are, we are building on, on a case from Matthew 24, verse 36 to 39. As it were in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days when the Son of Man shall come. What were they doing before the flood? They were eating and drinking and giving in marriages. The Bible says, until the flood came and it took them unaware. And they were not aware that time was up and they were taken unaware. And because of that, they lost everything in that flood, lost their wives, I mean, lo lost their lives and their wives and their children, their property, their ngombes, their sheep, and everything except Noah and his wife and uh, his sons and his son's wives were saved in that particular particular moment and so jesus says 
as it were before that time so shall it be sister esther in the days just before the son of man shall come and this morning i want us to build on from where we ended uh, yesterday uh, in chapter 7 in chapter 7 of um, um, uh, of of, uh, of Genesis chapter 7 of Genesis I think yesterday we read from verse 1 I want us to go up to up to verse 4 up to verse 4 the Bible says there that um, then the Lord said to Noah go into the ark you and all your household for I have seen that you are righteous before me and in your generation that was our reading yesterday then verse 2 says you shall take with you seven each of every clean animal a male and his female two each of animals that are unclean a male and female also seven each of birds of the air male and female keep the species alive on the face of all the earth verse 4 says for after seven days seven more days i will cause it uh, to rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights and i will destroy from the face of the earth everything that i have made may god bless the reading of his word amen and this morning we are talking about the subject don't waste the second chance don't waste the second chance don't waste it brothers and sisters when you've been given a second opportunity don't lose it and don't waste it um the bible says that um so the lord commanded noah to enter the ark uh the clean animals in sevens and the unclean in twos i want you to look at the usage of the the numbers in sevens and then 40 days 40 nights there are things that uh, when they are spoken in the bible uh we need just to pay attention to them seven seven days now seven speaks to uh speaks to to creation for example speaks to creation so what god wants to do is to undo the creation what he wants to do now by bringing the flood is to undo the creation in six days uh, he created the heavens and the earth and the seventh day he rested so the seven days speaks to the idea of um, um, of the creation number two it also speaks to the concept of worship look at are we together uh, she's uh, uh, he speaks to the concept of worship for seven days you wake then the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord in it you shall not do no work so the Lord wants to undo the creation uh, the Lord wants to undo his creation by bringing the flood. At the same time, the seven also is a reminder, is a call to worship of God. At the same time, when God wants to destroy the entire earth and the entire generation, at the same time, God is calling for worship, for obedience. God is calling for destruction on one side. On the other side, God is making a call. I want to destroy the earth. But those that are ready to worship me and to obey my word, they will be saved. So I want you to see uh, this, uh, this concept in here. So the seven days speak to the undoing of the creation. God is going to destroy everything. On the same time, at the same time, it's also calling for worship. Because within the seven days is the issue of worshiping God. So God wants to destroy everything. At the same time, he's, he's, uh, he, he's calling for people to make a decision to worship him. I am going to destroy the world. But those that want to make a decision, tapiwa, to choose that we don't want to participate in the destruction, we want to choose God. Um, in that same judgment, the same judgment, others will be destroyed, others will be saved. Now, there's also the issue of the 40 days. People say that the 40 days also speaks to the idea of judgment and the idea of probation. Um, uh, scholars have said that, um, uh, you know, um, um, uh, Moses spent 40 days in the, um, 
in, in the palace of Pharaoh. He spent 40 days. He also spent 40 days um, in Midian. He also spent 40 days um, uh, in the wilderness. So 40 days in the palace, 40 days in media when he was doing his masters or in humility in media. Then 40 days, um, 40 years with the children of Israel in the wilderness. And then when you add and put those together, it comes to 120. And the others say, you see, the experience of Moses is similar to the experience of Noah of the 120 days. People just play around with the words and also with the word with the word of God. But here it is, friends. Here it is. The Bible says, Noah, you must enter the ark. You and your family. You and your family. And I want to thank God for Noah. Brothers and sisters, please, if you are to lose anything in this world, at least don't lose your family. Don't lose your family. Sister Ivan, don't lose your family. Don't lose your family. You may preach and preach for everyone to be saved, but please, at the bottom of everything, don't lose your family. Don't lose your family. Don't lose your family. You can be committed to church, committed to the things of God, committed in the righteousness of God, Sister Doreen. Please, when everything is said and done, don't lose your family. You can lose your friends, lose colleagues, lose employment. Sister Ketiwe, please, in the ultimate, don't lose your family. Don't lose your family. Some of us are losing everything. You lose your job, you lose your ngombe, you lose your sheep, and at the end, you lose even your wife, you lose your children, you lose your marriage, you lose your relationship. You can lose everything, but don't lose your family. Please, don't lose your family. In your being busy and enjoying, in the drinking, in the drinking, in the giving in of marriages, in the enjoyment of this life, don't lose your family. Don't lose your family. Noah, for me, I thank God for Noah. Because if there are people that are difficult to listen to your sermon as a preacher, it's your wife and your children. And if you want to test your faith and your Christianity and how genuine you are as a believer, please go and test your Christianity in the presence of your wife, in the presence of your children, in the presence of your husband. If you think you are faithful, let's ask your wife. If you think you are faithful, let's ask your husband. If we think you are good as a Christian, we need to ask your family. You know, that's the issue. That's the issue. That's the issue, friends. Don't lose your family. Don't lose your family. No one in the preaching of the 120 days, no one preached. Everyone else rejected his family. He re I mean, rejected the message except his family. I, 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 I am sure that no one must have been really a righteous man. You know, if there are people that are difficult to believe in your preaching, it's your wife. <laughs> it's your wife and your children. And if it's your wife who is a preacher, the difficult person to convert is your husband. Because he will just tell you, fish, fish, fish. <laughs> you, what can you tell me? What can you tell me? Because they will not even see you as a husband or as a wife. They will just see you as one of those... Uh, those criminals, those liars. You want to test how faithful you are? Don't go to church. Go to your family. Go to your family. Do they still call you honey, daddy? Do they still call you a father? There. There at home. Try it there. That is where you can test there. You can test your faith there and your Christianity. There at home. They are at home. They are at home. Some of us have lost everything. In Chitoyali, Pua, in Chupochali, Pua, in Piashali, Pua, in Chitoyali, Pua, Business Yali, Pua, in Mombeshali, Pua. Everything is Pua. Everything is finished. You want to test how faithful you are with God, Brother Sage? Try it with your wife. Try it with your wife. That's the reason why, in some places of employment, 
when they ask you are you married and then you say no they will say no for this particular job we need someone who is married because they know marriage is a way of shaping some some characters they have a way of teaching people how to be honest how to be faithful how to be fair relationships have a way of molding people women have a way of molding their husbands and husbands have a way of molding their wives brethren you fail elsewhere but don't fail at home please underline that you fail during your night school fail there but at home please don't there pass even just with a clear pass just to do just do a pass there jenna papata fail somewhere but kunganda mupase ko at least let's have a challenge with you at church but at home please pass please there pass tracy i can see that you're trying to quote daddy please at home at least pass kuskuru kuria you can have a d plus or a c or a charged c there you have a c but at home have an a plus have an a plus Listen, friends, the Bible says the Lord spoke to Noah and says, you and your family enter. Noah failed to convert the entire generation. At least he converted the wife. We need to salute Noah. He managed to baptize one of the difficult church members to baptize. He, 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 he managed to baptize. <laughs> I don't know whether you've tried to teach your wife uh, driving. Those of us that have tried, uh, we can only thank God. I, I don't know if some of you have tried to teach your wife driving. Just, le honey, let me teach you how to drive. You know the war that is there. You know the war that is there? No, please, let's see. Please, this, there's a tree here. There's a tree here. Ah, if not now, you can drive. You drive the car yourself. Uh, it's, it's not easy it's not easy it's not easy fail everywhere you fail everywhere let people call you names everywhere you go let them call you names but at home but at home you be a darling you be a darling at home you be a darling Noah managed to save his family. He failed everywhere. He could have failed everywhere. Everyone else called him a drunkard. This man is drunkard. Hey, Noah is a what? Hey, Noah is a what? And by the way, that time, people never knew rain. That time. They never knew rain. They never knew rain. And so for Noah to say, Basagaga, muyoba ulabola. Muyoba ulabola. He says, no, this is now madness. This is now, this guy is a drunkard. This guy is a drunkard. How can he say there will be rain? His wife said, it is true, there will be rain. The children said, it is true, there will be rain. His own daughters-in-law said, there will be rain. Rain will come here. What kind of preaching is that? That even converted in-laws. Even in-laws could come and make confession and say, my son-in-law is a Christian. My son-in-law is a Christian and is a preacher of righteousness. Some of us now are shikula kanin kondo. In fact, it is the Wapongosh that is canceling you every day. Mate, are we together? But listen to this one. Noah preached not only for people to enter. <laughs> Mate, please listen to this one. Noah preached to an extent that even animals hate him. Even banyama mudara banyama, banyama mulumbe ba unwa balanjira. The animals heard the gospel. The animals heard the gospel seven by seven, and they cooperated two by two, and they were entering. Banyama gabanjila, bantu gabanywa, banyama. The animals were entering. The animals were entering the ark. In sevens, in twos, human beings were marrying and giving in marriages. They were drinking. They were having a nice time. But the nyamas were entering. The animals were entering. The, the, no, I don't know how he preached that he managed to convince elephants and the cattle. He managed to convince dogs. He managed to convince animals. And by the way, 
not only clean animals, he even managed to convince and clean animals. Even, even, even pigs hate that the rain here on this earth will come. The rain will come. I always ask myself, how did Noah preach that even animals could hear? Could hear the gospel? Could hear the gospel? But human beings know. Look around today. Look around today. People think that going to church is fashionable. They believe church is the opium of the poor. If you are poor, you go to church. If you are rich, you worship your material things. Milimo. When you are rich, people feel when you are rich, it's not time to worship God. Wait until the rains will come. Wait until the rains will come. Jones, wait until the rains will come. The Bible says, the Lord says, I have given you seven days. I have given them seven days. I have given them seven days. When Noah entered the ark, when Noah entered the ark, before the rains came, the Lord again extended the probation for seven more days. I wait. In fact, scholars have said the door remained open and the door, the door was closing slowly but sure. The door remained open. Noah was inside. The wife and his children and the animals had entered, but the door remained open. And the door was closing slowly. When Noah entered the ark and he entered inside there, those guys that remained outside were knocking at the door. Noah opened the door. Noah opened the door. Noah opened the door. Heli Ndimendajala Muliango. It is not me who has closed the door, but the angel outside has closed the door. Friends, you've been given a second opportunity and a second chance to listen to this message. And when you are given a second chance, don't waste it. Don't waste a second opportunity. Don't waste a second opportunity. You have an opportunity not to save the entire world, but to save your family. You may not have heard to this message before, but you have a second opportunity to revisit your preaching. You are preaching everywhere and saving everyone except your family. Be like Noah. Be like Noah. Be like Noah. Be like Noah. He lost everyone but saved the family. He lost everyone but saved the family. I pray, friends, that you may lose and be rejected by everyone and everyone may reject your message but let your family let your family believe in the word of god one more time colleagues reflect on your life reflect on your life reflect on your life some of us are investing in everything except your wife some of us are buying everything for everyone except your wife. Some of us are giving money to everyone and making everyone happy except your family. Don't lose your family. Don't lose your family. The world, friends, the coming of Jesus Christ is even by the door. Save your family. Save your family. Save your family. Save your family. It can't be that we bambi every time, each time you come to your family, kulaka, you have no time to save your family. Each time you come home, kula laka fear. The family has no time to be happy when you are there. No, friends, be like Noah. The wife, the children, the in-laws found favor, found peace, and together they were saved in that ark and in the kingdom of God. I pray that the Lord will give you this second opportunity to save the family. To save your family and be honest, be faithful.
to your family our god and our father in heaven we may lose everything lose everyone lose all the money and the property but help us not to lose our families your coming is even by the door every day we wake up we hear this family is on separation every day we wake up this family they have divorced each day we wake up the children are no longer with the parents we wake up this morning their case is at the court we wake up this morning this mother-in-law and this daughter-in-law cannot talk to each other we have lost each other in this world busy drinking marrying and giving in marriages violence and trouble everywhere father help us to emulate no that we may lose everything and friends but that we may not lose our families this is our prayer in the name of jesus amen may god bless you colleagues as you save your family as your family find favor may god bless you dylan god bless you save that guy well save that guy well save that guy well be faithful be honest save your family susan be faithful be honest be honest be fair some of us our families are mourning and crying every day because of what we are doing let your family find favor find peace because you are a child of god we'll see you again tomorrow amen